Today on Ag Etc., we start off with tips on unloading cattle with stockmanship expert Kurt Pate. Next, see how using bees can help your canola crop. Then learn about the Kansas State University's Kansas Agricultural Mediation Services. Then Dr. Blevins tells us what to look for in horse feeds to eliminate problems in your horse. MLN with Mark McCulley with Certified Angus Beef, talking about beef sustainability. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. We're going to look at things from a little different point of view today. Now you need to decide how you can make this fit into your style and your operation. This is simply looking at it from the point of view of the calmest cattle for the highest gain or the highest reproduction and hopefully for the highest profit. Now you've got to figure out where you want to go with this as far as your equipment, your style of handling, and what you do. So this is just a baseline idea. You take it from where you want to go with it. When we unload these cattle here, we'll unload them one compartment at a time. And as we get ready, Chris will go ahead and let this bunch out. As these cattle come off the trailer, I'm going to do what I call hooking these cattle on. So I'll help them get off. As soon as they start to come off this trailer, I want to be out here and catching their eye and actually catching their mind and seeing what they need. So as they come off here, as they come off, they're going to be looking at everything that's around here. I'm going to try not to turn them back out, turn them back into the trailer, but I'm going to let them step out here and I'm going to try to get these cattle where they start looking to me as their, their, their source of attention and my pressure to get them to move. So I want to get these cattle stopped and hooked on to me when they first step out. So this first compartment, that's pretty good. Well, now I'm gonna go right down their side. Now this heifer here looks to be the kind of the most sensitive. So I'll get back here and we'll just send her, send these cattle right on down and let them walk away from me. Now, as we get this little bunch set up here, I'll, we'll go ahead and let this next set out. And I'll just see if I can draw these guys. We'll have somebody send them on by. And as they come out, I'll do the same thing. We'll get them sent out. And now as they come, I'll just catch their eye and let them come to their buddy. So I'm gonna take control of these calves right off. I wanna make sure that they understand that I'm in control of the pressure and we'll let them come on right on by. I'll let this heifer here, I'll let her catch me. Watch her ears. She'll bring her ears to me. That's just enough. Now I can walk right on by her and I'll send her to the bunch. Real good. Now we'll bring our next bunch. As they come off, they should have a little more, more movement. They got a little farther to go before they have to step down. And right here, I'll just, I'll just try to get these heifers eye, hook them on and I'll let them go by me. Real nice, these heifers, now I knew nothing about the heifers, they knew nothing about me, now we've just made our handshake. They've taught me kind of how much pressure they need, I've taught them that I'm going to give them the right kind of pressure. That's kind of what start we want to have. That takes a little more time than just letting them roar off the trailer, but I think that time spent will create a good relationship for the rest of the time we work, whether it's one hour or for the rest of their life. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. 
We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Buffalo Bill Cody earned his legendary title in Oakley. Bring the family and come celebrate Oakley's pioneering history and unique geography at two sites, the Buffalo Bill Cultural Center and the Fick Fossil Museum. Cody's statue marks his achievements and welcomes visitors to the Cultural Center. The Fick Fossil Museum houses world-class fossils and artifacts. You'll find Oakley at the hub of U.S. Highways 83 and 40 and I-70. Stop for the legend. Stay for the day. Discover Oakley. This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. My name is Mike Stom and I'm the canola breeder here at Kansas State University. And we're standing here on the North Agronomy Farm next to our winter canola breeding nursery. Canola makes an excellent source of food for all types of bees. If you look around here, you'll see lots of native honeybees as well as bumblebees. It's at this time of year when the honeybees come out of the almond orchards in California, and they will often bring those bees to flowering canola fields in Oklahoma and Kansas. The reason they do that is because canola, again, is an excellent food source. The nectar is high in sugars. The pollen provides an excellent protein source. Canola is a crop that does not need bees to produce seed, but bees are very beneficial to canola, and canola is very beneficial to bees. We often see when we introduce bees to canola that hive weights improve. We also see the general health of the bees improve. What you see behind me is another example of a public-private partnership that we have with Monsanto where we are developing experimental winter canola hybrids. The reasons that we are using tents and bees here to produce these experimental hybrids are to move the pollen from the male plant to the female plant. So. We have to keep the bees inside the cages so that we don't contaminate with other bees and pollen from other plants. So a canola variety that a producer would plant in his field does not necessarily need bees to pollinate because canola is a self-pollinating crop. However, when we make these test crosses between the male sterile and the male fertile, we need bees to carry the pollen from the male fertile plant to the male sterile plant to produce the seed then that is is then fertile that the producer would then go ahead and plant in his field. And so we're doing this research with Monsanto to see if we can produce these experimental hybrids and then as we move forward with this public and private relationship with Monsanto we someday may be able to develop Roundup Ready cultivars this way or Roundup Ready hybrids um, for Monsanto to test those in our southern Great Plains environment to see if those cultivars could then be grown by producers in the Southern Great Plains. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work. It is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years and There's no reason for us to look for any other service. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. 
The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. My name is Janelle Coons and I am with Kansas Agricultural Mediation Services. We're administered by K-State Research and Extension here in Kansas, but we are a USDA funded program and we help producers if they ever have any um, ag legal, financial, or mediation questions. We do get a lot of producers calling into our program and asking for information about ag credit situations. Um, we can help provide them support services such as agricultural financial counseling as well as legal assistance. We do have an attorney here on staff. His name is Forrest Bueller and he often helps callers over the phone and answers questions and it doesn't cost anything to talk with him confidentially. We encourage producers to be proactive and give us a call and we can help find them the support that they need. We've been the Ag Mediation Program for Kansas for around 30 years, and there are several other states with programs, but um, ours is kind of unique in that we're also an educational service. Um, often producers will call in and we'll just help guide them through questions that they might have. It might be about lease issues, fence law, estate planning, several different types of questions that they can call in about um, just to help producers prepare for mediation if that is needed. We want them to participate in a mediation with um, a lot of the tools and resources they need to help answer questions that um, other participants of the mediation might have. Um, one of the most common types of calls we get are about ag credit questions. Um, that can be maybe loan restructuring or uh, looking at um, financial debt and some cash flow issues. So producers will call in with that type of question um, and we'll get them connected with our attorney here on staff and um, he'll kind of help them explore what their options might be. And a lot of the times they're going to visit with a farm financial analyst who will come out to their farm, help them go over the books. They'll run a computer software just to kind of look where um, those cash flow issues might lie and what their feasibility options are. And then they have a chance to go back and visit with their lender and, um, you know, keep moving forward and, you know, renegotiate some loans and, and that kind of thing. So that's one of the primary types of cases we work on. Um, and it, it doesn't necessarily involve mediation at the end of all that. They usually can get things resolved by um, having a visit from a farm financial analyst. Uh, again, we do handle a lot of ag credit situations as well as um, USDA programs. We work a lot with the Farm Service Agency as well as NRCS. Our phone number for our office is 1-800-321-FARM and we just remind producers that we are a confidential and safe place to call and we encourage them to be proactive and hope that we can help answer their questions and give them some guidance. Summer is busy at Tarwater Farm and Home. We have just about everything you'll need for your summer projects and we're consistently competitively priced. Tarwaters can help make your grass and garden grow. And we have a huge variety of equipment to cut it. If you have a farm, Tarwaters has the products and equipment to keep it going strong. And our expanded parking lot will make it even more convenient to shop. So come see us at Tarwater Farm and Home in Topeka. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, 
the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Hello and welcome to Horsin' Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. Today we're going to talk about something that could be bad for your horse, even though you do this with your horse every day, and that's feed them. And horse feed, in general, is really safe, and we don't have any concerns when you feed your horse a daily basis. But just some things to kind of think about in your everyday feeding of your horse and things that could cause issues with your horse if they would get exposed to it. One would be generally just some fungus in the feed, uh, even fungus that could be even on the corn. Now the fungus that can be on the corn could even cause neurologic issues on your horse and some of those cannot be reversed very well if a horse would ingest enough of it. So moldy type corn would be something we'd want to prevent the horse from consuming especially over a period of time. The other one is just general molds and dust that could be either in grains but also in hay, or even just out in the pasture just because they're around the road. Now with those, we're more concerned with, yes, molds that can definitely cause issues other than that of neurologic, maybe even cause colic on your horse. The other thing would be just the dust and molds that they consume or uh, inhale while by that feed because as we know horses do breathe while they're eating and through their nose and that can get into their lungs and can cause inflammation sometimes issues like heaves so I think keeping track of that or knowing the quality of feed is also beneficial in preventing certain diseases now the other one that sometimes people kind of don't know a lot about until their horse would be exposed and that's ionophores, or menensin, or remensin is some different names for it. And really, they use that mainly in cattle to prevent different type of microorganisms from causing issues with them. In addition, it helps with increasing their uh, average daily gains and consumption. But in horses, they are very sensitive, sensitive to this toxin or ionophore, and that can cause issues cardiovascular, meaning their heart and their blood supply, and in addition, some horses could even die if they get enough of it. So I think that is something to be aware of. Now, how would they get that? I think the biggest thing that we need to remember, most feed companies, if they feed multi-species, it's always a potential concern. So cattle feed, before they would make a horse feed is always a possibility, especially if they have an ionophore in their cattle feeds at that company. So you need to ask questions and see if they do a washout to try to make sure that there's nothing in that horse feed before they make the feed for you. Now the other thing would be if they be in with cattle uh, in the trough, you know, they left something in the trough and have issues, then that would be something you need to keep in mind too. I think the biggest thing, make sure your feed is fresh, it smells good, the horse is acting fine, don't see any molds, keep your feed fresh, don't store it for long periods of time and cause molds, and if you ever have any issues or concerns, consult your veterinarian or give us a call here at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins for Horsing Around, and we'll see you around.
The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron. With American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide radio and TV. The all-new Better Horses Network. Heinen Brothers, a fourth-generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag, selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program, 800-760-4964. HeinenBrothersAg.com. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulders sure hurt. I kept waiting, and it, it didn't get better, and so I went to an orthopedic surgeon, and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. I, I farm and ranch by myself. It's not gonna work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Got down there at eight o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30, the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes and then injected it in my shoulders and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Certified Angus Beef Vice President Mark McCulley says, A simple explanation for beef supply chain sustainability is no simple task. You know, we talk a lot about sustainability. Uh, it's, it's definitely a buzz term, has been for, for some time, for sure, within the trade, within our chef uh, partners, uh, and, and within consumers. I, I think most consumers have a hard time defining it, though. That confusion creates disadvantages for people who market beef. One of the dangers that has been out there for, for some time is, is, is not getting a sound definition of what sustainable beef production means. Uh, I think in many times a term like that could be misused in the marketplace, maybe over-marketed uh, and lead consumers to believe that one uh, type of production is more sustainable or less sustainable than another. I think we've always believed that to be very dangerous and, and really not the case at all. Uh, cattlemen have known about and, and practiced sustainable agriculture and sustainable cattle production on their farms and ranches really forever. And, and so uh, we really felt it was important for everybody to get together and come up with some common definitions, some common terminologies that everybody could agree upon and move forward. On a mission to find a solution, the Roundtable for Sustainable Beef was formed. U.S. Roundtable for Sustainable Beef came together a, a few years ago, uh, really grew out of a global roundtable for sustainable beef that existed even before that. And it, it's primarily industry stakeholders. So folks from every segment of the beef supply chain, cattlemen, cow-calf producers, feed yards, uh, livestock marketers, and then packers and processors and retail and food service professionals. So every segment of the supply chain that's come together uh, with a very uh, vested interest in defining sustainability and making progress, continued progress in this area of sustainable production. The Roundtable's efforts have culminated in a documented framework, but they're looking for more feedback before finalizing recommendations and procedures. The U.S. Roundtable for Sustainable Beef has launched this framework that is being put out there and open to uh, public comment. What cattlemen need to do today is go out to uh, the, the website, spend some time going through the details, and, and make comment on that framework because that's really what the Roundtable is looking for now. The document is open for public comment through July 1st at usrsbframework.org. 
Then the roundtable will leverage the final framework to help develop relationships around sustainably produced beef and create more clarity in consumer marketing. Coming up with some of these common definitions, coming up with uh, uh, some, some language and some systems that uh, all stakeholders can agree upon will, will really make a, a lot more clear messaging to the consumer, uh, allow that consumer to navigate that, that beef case and, and, uh, uh, and, and select the things that are important to them uh, without the confusion of misleading terms or, or some misinformation in, in marketing claims. I'm Bob Cervera. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.